Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again for another video tonight. Today, I'm going to be discussing a plethora of variety. It's going to be a little bit of collectors, a little bit of band cards, um, and a little bit of random cards, and kind of some differences between some of the TCG and OCG stuff towards the end. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into this, starting out with Ga 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 Clerk. So I talked about this card. Um, a few times um, quite a while ago now. Um, this card has been increasing in price as of late, um, mostly for the first edition, even for the unlimited, it's a couple dollars. This card is completely unplayable. It's a total garbage card. Garbage card as for like playable wise, it's just, it's unplayable, but it's artwork is fantastic. It's got, you know, the really cute anime artwork going on right here. It is a solo single print, super rare from Cosmo Blazer. So I think that kind of explains why there's so little on the market. But I think personally, this card has just become a collector's card for its artwork in general. And the first editions are sitting about five plus dollars and then it quickly starts to go off from there. But there's only two pages. So that's just something to take note of. I personally only have a few copies of this myself. I think two or three of the first editions. Um, but if you guys have this card, it's worth a little bit of money and I don't see this card getting a reprint. There's no reason for this card to get a reprint. Um, no one really played this archetype, um, and it's just, uh, it, you know, I think it has potential to go up in the future, so if you guys have that in first edition print, I would definitely hold on to it. Uh, another card, the twin sister here, the Gaga -ga -ga Girl. Um, everyone's kind of been, not everyone, people have kind of talked about this here and there, and everyone's kind of known this has slowly started to um, get increase in value it's about ten dollars right now only one page left here and then it bottoms out at a swamping 25 uh, so again this is just uh this is not a solo print there's actually three versions of this to my understanding this is obviously the original print highest rarity um again i think this is just a play off the feet of dark magician girl she looks like dark magician girl so um there's collector's value in her artwork Moving on to Sea Monster Theseus, um, this card is pretty trash. Um, a lot of people like bashed this card so much, and people were so angry when this card came out of rate because Konami said it was going to be like this big, powerful, like OP card and all this stuff. Um, I personally, again, with a lot of my collector stuff, I go for artwork, specifically rarity and artwork, secret rares that have really good artwork. First editions is kind of my target range area. Um, and this is, I really like fusions, um, I just, I like purple, like the purple cards, and, and just, again, first edition secret rares have really killer artwork like this, I'm kind of into like the whole like sea monster, like pirates kind of theme here, and, um, this card, you know, I, I'm not gonna say it's gonna come back in the game hard, I don't know that, maybe it can, maybe it can, it, it won't um it doesn't really matter though the, the 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 reason why i'm bringing it up is because it's just so cheap right now there was other secret rare prints but you want to focus on the original print raging tempest first editions they're literally like two dollars um yeah they're roughly around two dollars there's four here for 99 cents plus shipping so you can you know dock and stock with that and um there's a plethora of first editions here there's a two of here there's five plus pages so i just think that this card is really really cheap and I personally think that this potentially can be a collector's card. It may take several years, it may take five years, it may take a decade, depending on this card gets reprinted. It's already had a couple preprints already, but I just think it has fantastic artwork and it's really cheap. So I would definitely pick up a playset if you guys don't have one, just to have, just in case it does go up, because it is a fantastic card art wise. Moving on to Mystical Space Typhoon. So there's a lot of amazing prints. It's it's pretty incredible. This card has been in the game forever. There's a whopping 49 prints. It's pretty incredible. This is probably one of the um, most printed cards in the game. Like 49. This is this is insane. Like I can't believe there's actually 49 prints. Um, of course, there's the Ultimate Errors. I don't really want to talk about the Ghosts. So look very very nice. I really do like the Ghost Golds from the Haunted Mine, sitting around ten dollars plus. These are very very nice. Um, but I want to talk more specifically about the ultra rares now. It's up to you Some people like spell ruler over magic ruler. I personally like magic ruler myself I like the magic stamps and the old kind of school generation one nostalgic value. You can see the magic stamp here uh, Of course, you're gonna to want to go for the first editions I think the last time I checked up on these they were going for about 27s for the first editions of lightly played again Always gonna to want to go for at least lightly played for collectability or just, you know, in general. 
And um, there's actually one for 16 here. Um, so 16 looks like the new price point. So this has gone down a little bit. I may have been mistaking, kind of jumped the gun a little bit on the 27. But um, I think this is a fantastic card. Twin Twister is awesome. Um, some people say Twin Twister is completely superior and rendered this card useless, but I don't believe that's the case. I think MST is always a good classic one for one. Um, it is a quick play. And um, it's just a, a super nostalgic, awesome card, and probably one of my, if not one of my all-time all favorite ultra-rare magic cards in the game. Um, so it, it's pretty pricey. Personally, um, I don't really, this with this card being ancient as hell, I really don't see this price point going down anytime soon. But um, it's just a really old card, and it's really nostalgic, has awesome collectability, and it has a plethora of gameplay. Um, I personally still side MST, personally myself. I side Twin Twisters too, um, but even sometimes MST as well. So that's something to look into. Uh, really quickly, there's also a couple other versions. This would definitely be my favorite. You know, a lot of people like... The ghost, I do like personally the ghost and the ultimate. Of course, looks really nice. But personally, I would either go for the ghost, um, the original print magic ruler ultra rare first edition. So these secret rares look pretty cool. But I would even say even more so, I really like the hobby league parallel ultras. These are really nice too. You got to be careful because I'm pretty sure these are made by Upper Deck, and I think they're like kind of have like a little bit. They're a little bit thicker cardstock, so I'd be careful about that. Um, but the secret rares look really nice too. You got the dual terminal. There's just so many options. You have the dual terminal. You have two prints of the legendary collection secret rares, um, the ultra parallel hobby league, um, the original print ultra rare OG, the ghost rare, and then of course the ultimate rare. So I just think this is a really good card and there's so many awesome rarities for this card. So um, I would definitely, you know, just pick your favorite rarity and get a place out of it and just to have. I think it's a great card. It's a great utility card to have. The next card is going to be Archlord Christia. So there's four prints of this, two super rare prints and a common print. Surprisingly enough, the super rares are like nothing. They're so cheap. Um, Collector's Tin Promo and Destiny Soldiers. So um, this card is so amazing. This is one of my all-time favorite fairy cards. First edition is pretty hard to get. I personally don't have a first edition copy. I've really been trying to get one for quite a while now. They are pretty pricey, but we even look here for even the unlimited. It's going for about 16 bones for this card, Secret Rare. Beautiful artwork, amazing card. This card is one of the most, if not probably the most powerful um, level 8 uh, fairy type monster in the game. It's just a great card. I remember when this they were using this with agents back in the day, um, and I don't know, just good times. Just really awesome card, really powerful card, really strong card. Um, and you can see here, there's not even a first edition on the first page, but it's about $16 is the minimum price point for the original print secret rare. And then it doesn't even look like we're going to get a first edition until we get to the very last page where it looks like we're even getting some foreign German ones, which is pretty cool, but unfortunately they are all unlimited. Here's a German first edition for $80. So my goodness, this card goes from 16 to $80 for the first first edition. This card is, um, and then you can just see these prices over here. This is ridiculous. So this is obviously already become a collector's card and not only a collector's card and having amazing artwork, it's just a powerhouse card. So. If you guys have this first edition, congratulations. I've been trying to get one for quite a while now. Doesn't look like I'm going to get one anytime soon because these prices are just insane. But um, Archlord Christia is just an all around awesome card. So just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. Next card, really quick, I want to touch on is Drill and Lockbird. I've noticed that the ultimate, of course, ultimate super nice, but the prices of, you guys remember, look at this, like the market price of the rare is like $15. And now it's literally like $3 for the rare. No one really cares about the rare because we have ultras and we have super rares. Personally, my favorite, um, and I think I guess this kind of all happened because of the common reprint, but 
I mean, honestly, I don't really think anyone is gonna play the common. I mean, if you look at the common, it's like about like three, three-ish dollars for the common, but then you can go for the super rares, which personally are my favorite. I mean, I would honestly, like, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm into ultimates and stuff and everything too, but for the price point, the the super rares are like $5. Like if we look here, they're like a little bit over $5 around the $5 price range. There's 52 prices. This is the one that I would personally go for. I wouldn't want to be playing with a common or a rare when I can get a OTS super rare for literally just a few dollars more. The ultras are pretty much the same as the supers, but I don't really like the ultras. I don't. I just don't like the way they look. I would personally go for the super rares. I have a thing for um, tournament pack super rares and hollows. I just think they're like more rare to me, and I like them. So um, personally, I believe that this card is popular enough that it deserves a secret rare reprint. Of course, I'm biased because secret rare is one of my favorite rarities, and I've been kind of waiting for this card to get reprinted secret rare um hopes have kind of gone down a little bit with the announcement of the common reprint so i don't know maybe in dual devastator since we're getting all of the ghost girls maybe maybe konami will throw a nice sweet treat in there and throw in maxi and drill and lockbird drill and lockbird that would be fantastic i think the set would sell off the shelves even faster than it already is with the alternative artwork of the ghost girls but me personally, I think this is a fantastic price. If you can get these for around the $5 range, like right here, there's a three of, I think it's fantastic that we're finally able to get some pretty nice high rarity drolls um, there. So moving on, next card is gonna be Maxi. This card is banned, everyone knows that. This is probably the most powerful, in my opinion, hand trap card in the, all of the game that we've ever had at least so far. Uh, of course, the ultimate rares are some crazy hard price point. We're not really gonna go too much into that. I wanna go into the original print first edition secret rares from Storm of Ragnarok. Ragnarok. They have been going for quite a bit of money for quite a while now. Everyone has been anticipating this card to come off the ban list for quite a while now. But I just wanted to show you really quickly, as I'm sure you guys are aware, the original prints are going for a lot of money still. This card has been banned for a very long time, and m m me included, I've been personally waiting for this card to... I'm holding my first edition original copy. So we get the first first edition for 50 bones, and then just goes up from there. So second to last page here, you can kind of take a peek at the prices here. So this card is worth money and it's been banned for quite a while. Um, again, probably the most powerful interactive hand trap we've had to date in the game. Really quickly, I want to take a peek at the super rares. Now, I, I have I have a several, I think maybe I think have five first edition secret rares that I've been holding on to waiting for this card to get unbanned so I can unload them. But honestly there's the ultra rare and then there's a super rare, and then there's the common and then there's the gold and you know all that stuff but i really personally for playability like i'm not gonna play a 50 dollar first edition secret rare card max c i know everyone has like their own thing a lot of people like to play with high rarity cards but um as i continue on in this game the more i think about it like my really high you know top dollar cards i'm not going to be like slapping them on the table playing with them that's why i love the super rare so much because the super rare is about five dollars now and again i've said this before in my previous videos five dollars is a very good price for the tin promo of maxi um, it looks great. I love the super rares. I mean, of course, compared to the secret rare and the ultimate rare, um, it's going to be kind of your choice on that. But for playability, like with this card being such an amazing card, and when it does come unbanned, because you guys better believe it will come be unbanned eventually, um, I would opt to play the super rares. I love the super rares, and I play super rare hand traps all day long. Like, I'm not going to be playing my first edition secret Ash Blossoms and Joy Springs and uh, you know ash blossoms um i'm just not gonna do that when we have like these lower rarity prints that i can play with that i can like you know i'm not gonna risk damaging my high rarity stuff like i'm gonna keep those in the binders and the top loaders like the collectible stuff so i really recommend you guys do the same thing so if you guys have a don't have a playset of the super for playability i think the supers look fantastic they look really nice and again, like, why would you want to be playing with a $50 first edition secret or a $100 plus ultimate rare maxi 
I mean, you guys can have them. I think they look great. I personally have the secret too. Like, I think you guys should get high rarity. I, I like high rarity stuff too, but I wouldn't be playing with the high rarity stuff. I would have my secrets, which I do, and then I would have my super rares, which I do as well, that I'll actually be playing in tournaments in my actual deck. So that's just food for thought. Moving on to another band card, That Grass Looks Greener. So this is still a solo print donning from Raging Tempest. It's a secret rare, fantastic artwork. Um, one of just a powerhouse car card, thus it is forbidden. Again, I'm a fond believer that everything does come back eventually off the ban list. I mean, we just got like Chaos Emperor Dragon, what was it, like a list or two lists ago, and that card had been banned since pretty much like the, the f generation one of Yu-Gi-Oh when it came out in Invasion Chaos. So um, again, that just shows, goes to prove that everything will come off eventually, in my personal opinion. Let's take a look at some first editions. The first editions are going to be about $7. Um, it's about $7, $7 plus, and then there's five plus pages here. So you guys can look into that a little bit later if you want. This is always a card I'm looking, keeping my eye on. One has fantastic artwork. It's a powerhouse card. It's super amazing. If it, when it comes, becomes unmanned, it may, may not get errated. Who knows? It is just a ridiculously powerful card. But um, I just want to keep this on your 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 radar. This is a solo print as of now. I don't think it's going to stay a solo print forever, obviously, um, with it being such a popular card, being such a powerful card. But um, I this is still a secret rare, which is a really high rarity, and I you know I don't see Konami printing this ultimate rare or anything like that. We don't get ghosts anymore, so I think this is always going to hold a really nice value, especially when it gets unbanned. So um, I don't, I'm kind of on the fence about six dollars seven dollar range still it's kind of expensive i would try my best to pick these up for five dollar range for first editions exclusively um but then again i don't really know if that's going to happen anytime soon because this is a secret rare and it is a solo print but i just wanted to keep that card on your guys's radar another band card is fairy tale snow so the time has come this card is down to about two dollars now we can see here, there's about 37 prices, four pages, and they're all about the $2 range, depending on how you rack and stack the shipping. I think this is a fantastic price. Artwork is amazing. Um, I know it's just a super rare, but again, I really have a thing for tournament pack super rares. I think they look really great. They're really nice quality. And um, this card is just, a, it's just a super, it was an abused card for the longest time. Um, people loved this card. People hated this card. Um, and Again, like it's it's got really awesome, cute anime bunny artwork, and it's just an awesome card. And eventually, it's gonna come back if it gets errated or not. Who knows? Konami's kind of unpredictable about what they decide to errat or not. But um, for two dollars, I think this is fantastic. So I think you guys should definitely pick up a playset. If you don't, this is currently the highest rarity we have of this card, and I think for two bones, that is a fantastic price. Moving into some more collectability cards, Ultimate Blue Eyes White Dragon. Several videos back, I talked about this in Dark Magician. Um, you're going to want to go specifically, again, for pretty much everything that I talk about. You can sort of see a trend here. You always want to go first edition. So I know this came from a starter deck. Um, the starter deck wasn't too long ago. I think I want to say maybe three-ish, four years ago, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a little bit more, I can't remember. Um, but this is currently the only ultimate rare print that we have TCG in, in the TCG for Blue Eyes. I'm not a big fan of the artwork that they chose. I think there's Blue Eyes, you know, being so infamous, has so many different um, alternate artwork and, all, and, artwork and stuff. Um, my personal favorite would probably be the anniversary artwork, but um, it, regardless of the fact, it is a Blue Eyes White Dragon and it is ultimate rare. And I just want to take a peek here at the first editions. There's a one here for about three dollars, and then it's a, there's another one for about three dollars here. There's about five pages left. Now I've personally been picking these up for about five dollars. Five dollars is kind of where I've been picking the majority of my copies up, my first edition ultimates, and these are about three. So I wouldn't hesitate on picking up on these for three dollars for this card. This is this is um. I think it's a good investment, uh, depending on where you're at. I would definitely feel comfortable picking these Ultimate Rare First Edition, make sure it's First Edition, Blue Eyes White Dragons, because I think as time goes on, we get further away from this, and with Blue Eyes White Dragon just being an, you know a super popular anime card and being Ultimate Rare, 
regardless of the fact that it came out from a star deck, I think it's going to um, hold some pretty great value. So this is an OCG card. Let's just take a moment, a moment of silence, and just marvel at this amazing OCG, not censored, original artwork here. I just wanted to show you guys this really quick. Of course, this is a ridiculous um, price because this is a uh, championship card and all that. It's a Ghost Dark Magician Girl. If you guys didn't know that Dark Magician Girl comes ghost in Japan. They get some pretty sweet stuff like this. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you this because you can't really see that well because it, you know, the ghost. But anyway, this is the, if you guys haven't seen it, this is the original Japanese version. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this of Dark Magician Girl. And this is why I don't invest in English Japanese or English Dark Magician Girl. Um, same thing with Gemini Elf, which I'm going to kind of go into and explain a little bit later. Um, but this card is worth so much money. Like, it's insane. Like, if you look at, um, if you look at the Magician Force ones, like, the Unlimiteds are going for, like, 85. Like, the cheapest one is 85 for the Unlimiteds, and it's just, I kind of get it. Like, it's all we have here, and it is really popular, and it's a great, you know, anime card, and it's a Yugi card, and all that stuff, but, like, why? Like, you can get the Japanese versions for so much cheaper and they have awesome rarities in Japan. Um, I guess it's a little different because I mean I, I'm currently living in Japan. I'm actually on my way out of Japan and I guess it's way cheaper for me to get them here and this is a, definitely a huge card that I invested here in Japan just because the artwork is just completely superior in every single way with the bust on the chest and the black, black star of magic um, album here on her chest and anyway um, I wanted to talk about the ultimate rares, and, and these are some pretty cool prices. If you look at all the um, Dark Magician stuff, again, just random plethora stuff, like the tin one. It's a market price of like $53. Like, where did they get this from? This is insane. Like, when did we, was there like a buyout on this or something? Because now it's sitting at about 30-ish, um, depending if you want to throw this one in or not, in there or not. But I wanted to take a look. Is it going to bring up the ultimate rares? If it takes a little bit too long. I don't want to dig through too many of the pages here. So this was another thing. So, um, like, if you guys can get OCG Japanese uh, Super Rare Dual Terminal Dark Condition Girl, that's my personal favorite print of Dark Condition Girl, and it looks fantastic. Like, that is, I've, I've bought, and I think I bought, like, I don't know, maybe like two or three like nine pocket pages of this card. This card just looks so great. Personally, it's my favorite print of Dark Magician Girl. I really like the artwork that they chose for, and then it's being, you know, a holographic dual terminal card is super awesome too. Um I don't I don't think it's gonna show me. There's so much it wouldn't let me like find Dark Magician Ultimate Rare for some reason. I've been trying to find the the ultimate anyway i don't know so uh, go go ahead and check out and try to find the ultimate rare version so the counterpart to the ultimate rare blue eyes and check those again i was getting those for like around the four dollar range so if you guys can get those for the four three dollar range just like the blue eyes i think that's would definitely be worth taking a look into next card is going to be another collector's card it's going to be invader of darkness i think i featured this in a couple of my videos um in the past this card is going pretty cheap right now, so this isn't really a playable card. There was a one point not too long ago that I think a couple people um, on the tube were kind of like zoomed in on this card or were kind of thinking about maybe like using this potentially maybe about I think it was like Sky, Stri Sky Strikers against Sky Strikers or something like that, but it's kind of hard to get out depending on what you're playing. So um, for me personally, it's an old school Secret Rare Generation 1 um, and its artwork is awesome. Effect isn't really like... It's just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of hard to, I don't know, it's kind of situ it's definitely very situational, but it's for collectability. So let's go ahead and look at the first editions here. No first editions on the first page. I actually just picked up uh, a couple of these myself um, for around the $2 range, and I don't know if we're going to be able to see any more for the $2 range. But again, with this card being a collector's card, you're gonna wanna go for first edition exclusively. Okay, so right here. So it's a, it's about a little over $2 right here from this store. And then let's move on to page five. There's really not that many uh, first editions available here. 
about so then it moves to about three dollars and then there's about one page left after that so again um i picked up several of these for two i think three dollars is still a pretty square deal i think anything like five or less is fantastic for at least lightly played this first edition exclusively of course um, just with this being an old school generation one secret rare, one of my all time favorite sets, Invasion of Chaos, the Chaos Monsters down out of this set, and you know there's just a lot of awesome nostalgic history behind this core set. So that's something to consider. The next card is gonna be the End of Anubis, which kind of has seen some hype over the last several months. Um, not really play hype, but just again, this is definitely hit hard in the collector's market. And why not? It really does have amazing artwork. I really, really like it. Again, it has the whole theme dark style to it and the Egyptian kind of style to it. And it's just, it, it's got a cool name. It's got cool artwork. It's an old school secret rare. It's generation one from ancient sanctuary so it's pretty much got all that great aspects for i don't know why it says normal monster it's definitely an effect monster but uh it's got all the 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 caliber to be just a great uh a collector's card so we see the cheapest one here for eight bones and then it quickly jumps up to about 10. the thing is is that there's only two pages of this card left so this is quickly dwindling and you can see it already jumps up to about it bombs out at 60. so um, I don't really see anyone buying these anytime soon. I don't think it's really quite there when it starts to get to like 27 But the sure fact that there's only two pages left there's people the Economy in the market is definitely taking notice of this card and is definitely pushing rapidly into the collector's market Next card and the last card here. I want to talk about is going to be Gemini elf. So again, I personally don't invest in this card in the English because if you take a look over here at the Japanese version, it's just like Dark Magician Girl. It's just like any other uncensored artwork card. It just looks awesome. They just got the major bust here. Now, everyone likes their own thing. Me personally, I really believe that, you know, cards should have never been uncensored. Like, Yu Gi Oh! is a Japanese game, it dawns from Japan. And the creators of the game and the artists wanted the cards to look a certain way. And I think it's really silly that uh, we got the shaft and we got our censored cards. And it kind of just takes away from the artist's work, uh, in my opinion, personally. So um, this actually comes ultimate rare. I'm actually on the official Konami website here. I just went to the top and changed it to Nihongo, which is the kanji for Japanese and you can see all the OCG packs and rarities right here. I personally have several of the ultimate rares here from the BC-34, and they just look fantastic. Um, there's also, uh, what's it called? This uh, Parallel plus Ultra Rare, which looks really great too. Probably two of my favorite rarities in this card. Um, anyway, so really quickly, but I'm not going to lie though, because we got this as a secret rare originally in first gen generation one Labyrinth of Nightmare, the purple pack, I like to call it. This, I'm not going to lie, um, it's expensive because of course this is a collector's card, even though I really don't agree with the artwork, just like Dark Condition Girl, and I wouldn't really invest in this um, outside of the OCG because it is censored. I really do like the first edition secret rares. And let's take a peek really quick at the first editions, if we can find some. And we, if we look at it right here, like, no joke, this definitely has made its way fully into the collector's market because it is sitting at a whopping $70, and that is the cheapest first edition that you're going to find. So congratulations if any of you guys have a first edition original print Gemini Elf. It's, you know, minimum of $70. Um, and this is, I, I actually kind of quick little story. I actually named my puppy, my dog when I first, well, not really when I first, it was a couple years into the game. Um, I got a, my family bought a Chow German Shepherd mix female puppy. And, um, I actually ended up naming her Gemini and it was after this card, Gemini Elf. So kind of a little cheesy story, history lesson for you guys here for the white Mexican. Um, that's all I have for you guys. Um, that is pretty much all the cards that I wanted to cover today. Um, and I don't really, that was all, all I pretty much wanted to talk about is kind of just my, my two cents for the day. I hope you guys 
learned some things from this video, enjoyed this video. Um, we got so we got some spoilers really quickly. I wanted to say we got some spoilers for the new Gold Sarcophagus 2019 Megatons. What, what did you guys think about that? Me personally, I'm I'm pretty excited about the Prismatic Secret Rares. Um, but I didn't think like their choices for the secret rares is kind of lame. Like I didn't really, I don't know. Like I don't mean to be like a negative Nancy, but I was actually kind of disappointed. Like I was actually really excited for the tins, but now that we have the spoiler list, I'm actually kind of disappointed. I don't know if I'm going to invest in cases of that anymore. I think I'm just going to have to buy some singles because I wasn't very impressed with the secret rare lineup, but. Um, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. This has been a showcasing by the White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.